The Hungarian Soviet Republic or literally Republic of Councils in Hungary Hungarian, Magyarzegi Tanichkostarsasig or Magyarzegi Socialista Shavetsizsiz Tanichkostarsasig was a short-lived communist rump state. When the Republic of Councils in Hungary was established, it controlled only approximately 23% of the territory of Hungary's classic borders. It was the successor of the First Hungarian People's Republic and lasted only from 21 March to 1 August 1919. Though the de jure leader of the Hungarian Soviet Republic was President Sándor Garbay, the de facto power was in the hands of Foreign Minister Bela Kun, who maintained direct contact with Lenin via radiotelegraph. It was Lenin who gave the direct orders and advice to Bela Kun via constant radio communication with the Kremlin. It was the second socialist state in the world to be formed, only preceded by the October Revolution in Russia which brought the Bolsheviks to power. The Hungarian Republic of Councils had military conflicts with the Kingdom of Romania, the Kingdom of Serbs, Croats and Slovenes and the evolving Czechoslovakia. It ended on 1 August 1919 when Hungarians sent representatives to negotiate their surrender to the Romanian forces. Formation As the Austro-Hungarian monarchy collapsed in 1918, an independent Hungarian People's Republic was formed after the Aster Revolution. The official proclamation of the republic was on 16 November 1918 and its president became Mihaly Karoli. Karoli struggled to establish the government's authority and to control the country. An initial nucleus of a Hungarian Communist Party had been organized in a Moscow hotel on 4 November 1918, when a group of Hungarian prisoners of war and other communist proponents formed a central committee. Led by Bela Kun, the first members returned to Hungary, and on 24 November created the Party of Communists from Hungary. Hungarian, the name was chosen instead of the Hungarian Communist Party, because the vast majority of supporters were from the urban industrial working class in Hungary which at the time was largely made up of people from non-Hungarian ethnic backgrounds, with ethnic Hungarians only a minority in the new party itself. The party recruited members while propagating its ideas, radicalizing many members of the Social Democratic Party of Hungary in the process. By February 1919, the party numbered 30,000 to 40,000 members, including many unemployed ex soldiers, young intellectuals, and ethnic minorities. The party came to power as the only group with an organized fighting force and promised Hungary would be able to defend its territory without conscription. Kuhn promised military help and intervention of the Soviet Red Army, which never came, against non communist Romanian, Czechoslovak, French, and Yugoslav forces. Kuhn founded a newspaper, called Voros Ujcig, Red News, and concentrated on attacking Karoli's liberal government. During the following months, the Communist Party's power base rapidly expanded. Its supporters began to stage aggressive demonstrations against the media. In one crucial incident, a demonstration turned violent on 20 February and the protesters attacked the editorial office of the Social Democratic Party of Hungary official paper, Napesava People's Word. In the ensuing chaos, seven people, some policemen, were killed. The government arrested the leaders of the Communist Party, banned Voros Ujcig and closed down the party's buildings. The arrests were particularly violent, with police officers openly beating the communists. This resulted in a wave of public sympathy for the party among the masses of Budapester proletariat. On 1 March, Voros Ujcig was given permission to publish again, and the Communist Party's premises were reopened. The leaders were permitted to receive guests in prison, which allowed them to keep up with political affairs. Coup d'état On 20 March, President Mihaly Karoli announced that Dane's Berinke government would resign. On 21 March, Karoli informed the Council of Ministers that only Social Democrats could form a new government, as they were the party with the highest public support in the largest cities and especially in Budapest. In order to form a governing coalition, Social Democrats started secret negotiations with the communist leaders, who were still imprisoned, and decided to merge their two parties under the name of Hungarian Socialist Party. President Karoli, who was an outspoken anti-communist, was not informed about the fusion of the Communist and Social Democrat parties. Thus, while believing to have appointed a Social Democratic government, he found himself faced with one dominated by communists. 
Mihaly Karoli resigned on 21 March. Bela Kuhn and his communist friends were released from the Margat Ring prison on the night of 20 March 1919. For the Social Democrats, an alliance with the KMP not only increased their standing with the industrial working class, but also gave them a potential link to the increasingly powerful Russian Communist Party, as Kuhn had strong ties with prominent Russian Bolsheviks. Following Lenin's model, but without the direct participation of the Workers' Councils Soviets from which it took its name, the newly united Socialist Party created a government called the Revolutionary Governing Council, which proclaimed the Hungarian Soviet Republic and dismissed President Karoly on 21 March. The liberal President Karoly was arrested by the new communist government on the first day, not until July 1919 did he manage to make his escape and flee to Paris. On 23 March, Lenin gave an order to Bela Kuhn, that Social Democrats must be removed from the power, thereby Hungary will be transformed into a real communist state, thus the «dictatorship of the proletariat» will rule it. Accordingly, the communists started to purge the Social Democrats from the government on the next day. The Garbai government Sandor Garbai, Bela Kuhn, Vilmos Bohm, Tiber Shamuli, Georg Nyester, Geno Varga, Z. Sigmund Kunfi, Deso Bikanyi, Joseph Pogany, Bela Vago, Zoltan Ronai, Karoli Vantis, Geno Lendler, Bela Shanto, Sandor Shabatos, Georg Lukacs, Geno Hamburger, Gyula Hevesi, Antal Dovsik, Gyula Langyel, and Bela Vago. In a radio dispatch to the Russian SFSR, Kuhn informed Lenin that a dictatorship of the proletariat had been established in Hungary and asked for a treaty of alliance with the Russian SFSR. The Russian SFSR refused because it was itself tied down in the Russian Civil War. The government was formally led by Sandor Garbai, but Kuhn, as Commissar of Foreign Affairs, held the real power, because only Kuhn had the acquaintance and friendship with Lenin, he was the only person in the government who met and talked to Lenin during the Russian Revolution and Kuhn kept the contact with the Kremlin via radio communication. The ministries often rotated among the various members of the government. Sandor Garbai President and Prime Minister of the Hungarian Soviet Republic Geno Lendler Commissar for Interior Sandor Chismidia, Karoli Vantis, Geno Hamburger, Georg Nyester, Commissars of Agriculture Joseph Pogany, later also Bela Shanto Commissars of Defense Zoltan Ronai, later also Istvan Lede, Commissars of Justice Geno Lendler, Commissar for Trade Moore Erdei, later also Bernat Condor, Commissars about Food Z. Sigmund Kunfi, later also Georg Lukacs, Tiber Shamuli, Sandor Shabatos, Commissars about Education Bela Kuhn, Commissar for Foreign Affairs Deso Bikanyi, Commissar of Labor Henrik Kalmer, Commissar for German Affairs Geno Varga, later also Gyula Lengyel, Commissars of Finance Vilmos Bohm, Commissar for Socialism, later also Antal Dovsik after declaration of the constitution changes took place in the Comissarero. The new ministries Geno Varga, Matyas Rikosi, Gyula Hevesi, Joseph Kellen, Ferenc Bahaki, Commissars about Economic Product Geno Lendler, Bela Vago Commissars about Internal Affairs, Railways and Navigation Bela Kuhn, Peter Agostin and Joseph Pogany, Commissars for Foreign Affairs Topic. Communist policies This government consisted of a coalition of socialists and communists, but with the exception of Kuhn, all commissars were former social democrats. Under the rule of Kuhn, the new government, which had adopted in full the program of the communists, decreed the abolition of aristocratic titles and privileges, the separation of church and state, codified freedom of speech and assembly, and implemented free education and language and cultural rights to minorities. The communist government also nationalized industrial and commercial enterprises, and socialized housing, transport, banking, medicine, cultural institutions, and all landholdings of more than 40 hectares. These economic policies created high inflation while leading to food shortages across the land. Public support for communists was also heavily dependent on their promise of restoring Hungary's former borders. The government took steps toward normalizing foreign relations with the Triple Entente powers in an effort to gain back some of the land that Hungary was set to lose in the post-war negotiations. 
The communists remained bitterly unpopular in the Hungarian countryside, where the authority of that government was often non-existent. The Communist Party and communist policies only had real popular support among the proletarian masses of large industrial centers, especially in Budapest, where the working class represented a high proportion of the inhabitants. The communist government followed the Soviet solution, the party established its terror groups like the infamous Lenin Boys to overcome the obstacles in the Hungarian countryside. The Hungarian government was thus left on its own, and a Red Guard was established under the command of Matyas Rakosi. In addition, a group of 200 armed men, known as the Lenin Boys, formed a mobile detachment under the leadership of Joseph C. Cerny. This detachment was deployed at various locations around the country where counter-revolutionary movements were suspected to operate. The Lenin Boys, as well as other similar groups and agitators, killed and terrorized many people e.g. armed with hand grenades and using their rifles butts they disbanded religious ceremonies. They executed victims without trial. This caused a number of conflicts with the local population, some of which turned violent. The situation of the Hungarian communists began to deteriorate in the capital city Budapest after a failed coup by the Social Democrats on 24 June. The newly composed communist government of Sándor Garbay resorted to large scale reprisals. Revolutionary tribunals ordered executions of people who were suspected of having been involved in the attempted coup. This became known as the Red Terror and greatly reduced domestic support for the government even among the working classes of the highly industrialized suburb districts and metropolitan area of Budapest. <inaudible> <inaudible> foreign policy scandal and downfall In late May, after the Entente military representative demanded more territorial concessions from Hungary, Kuhn attempted to fulfill his promise to adhere to Hungary's historical borders. The men of the Hungarian Red Army were recruited from the volunteers of the Budapest proletariat. In June, the Hungarian Red Army invaded the eastern part of the newly forming Czechoslovak state today Slovakia, the former so-called Upper Hungary. The Hungarian Red Army achieved some military success early on, under the leadership of Colonel Aurel Stromfeld, it ousted Czech troops from the north, and planned to march against the Romanian army in the east. Despite promises for the restoration of the former borders of Hungary, the Communists declared the establishment of the Slovak Soviet Republic in Presho on 16 June 1919. After the proclamation of the Slovak Soviet Republic, the Hungarian nationalists and patriots soon realized that the new communist government had no intentions to recapture the lost territories, only to spread communist ideology and establish other communist states in Europe, thus sacrificing Hungarian national interests. The Hungarian patriots in the Red Army saw this as a betrayal, and their support for the government began to erode the communists and their government supported the establishment of the Slovak communist state, while the Hungarian patriots wanted to keep the reoccupied territories for Hungary. Despite a series of military victories against the Czechoslovak army, the Hungarian Red Army started to disintegrate due to tension between nationalists and communists during the establishment of the Slovak Soviet Republic. The concession eroded support of the communist government among professional military officers and nationalists in the Hungarian Red Army, even the chief of the general staff Aurel Stromfeld, resigned his post in protest. When the French promised the Hungarian government that Romanian forces would withdraw from the Tishandel, Kuhn withdrew his remaining military units who had remained loyal after the political fiasco in Upper Hungary. However, following the Red Army's retreat from the north, the Romanian forces were not pulled back. Kuhn then unsuccessfully tried to turn the remaining units of the demoralized Hungarian Red Army on the Romanians. The Hungarian Soviet found it increasingly difficult to fight Romania with its small force of communist volunteers from Budapest, and support for both the war and the Communist Party was waning at home. After the demoralizing retreat from Northern Hungary, Later part of Czechoslovakia, only the most dedicated Hungarian communists volunteered for combat, and the Romanian army broke through the weak lines of the Hungarian Red Army on 30 July. Bela Kun, together with other high-ranking communists, fled to Vienna on 1 August with only a minority, including Georg Lukacs, the former commissar for culture and noted Marxist philosopher, remaining to organize an underground communist party. The Budapest Workers' Soviet elected a new government, headed by Gyula Pedal, which only lasted a few days before Romanian forces entered Budapest on 6 August. 
In the power vacuum created by the fall of the Soviet Republic and the presence of the Romanian army, semi-regular detachments technically under Horthy's command, but mostly independent in practice initiated a campaign of violence against communists, leftists, and Jews, known as the White Terror. Many supporters of the Hungarian Soviet Republic were executed without trial, others, including Pater Agostin, Ferenc Bahaki, Deso Bikanyi, Antal Dovsik, Joseph Haubrich, Kalmar Henrik, Kellen Joseph, Georg Nyester, Sandor Shabatos, and Karoli Vantis, were imprisoned by trial. Commissar suits. Actor Bela Lugosi, the founder of the country's National Trade Union of Actors, the world's first film actors union, managed to escape. Most were later released to the Soviet Union by amnesty during the reign of Horthy, after a prisoner exchange agreement between Hungary and the Russian Soviet government in 1921. In all, about 415 prisoners were released as a result of this agreement. Kuhn himself, along with an unknown number of other Hungarian communists, was executed during Joseph Stalin's Great Purge of the late 1930s in the Soviet Union, to which they had fled in the 1920s. See also Tiber Shamuli Aftermath of World War I Revolutions of 1917–23 Hungarian Revolution of 1956 Red Terror Red Terror Hungary Slovak Soviet Republic Topic. Footnotes Topic. Further reading Topic. External links Tiber Haidu, The Hungarian Soviet Republic. Alan Woods, The Hungarian Soviet Republic of 1919, The Forgotten Revolution. Quote,